Okay, part four, number four. So this is the last part of the stretch and fold. Sorry, there's a little baby in the background fussing. Maybe Bambino. So if you have a baby, you can stretch and fold pretty quick. But it's very important the stretch and fold that you do all three stretch and folds. I've tried to skip them. I've fallen asleep thinking, oh, I'll just do it twice. It doesn't work. The bread comes out short and fat and real thick. So it's very important stretch and fold. So we're on the third one, third and last one. Go back to this. If it's a little sticky, you can always put a little flour in your hands. But stretch it. I mean, by this time, it's good. Stretch, fold. 12 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Stretch it. I mean, it's pretty good now. 6 o'clock. Spin the bowl. I find spin the bowl easier. Stretch and fold. That's once. That's, that was eight. That was four. So then, of course, like I said, eight. One, 12 o'clock. The more you do it, the easier it gets. It took me about six months to get the hang of it. Thank God for my daughter, Amber, again, who taught me how to do this. Stretch and fold. This is the very important part. And I was skipping it sometimes because I was tired. Six o'clock. One more time. Nine o'clock. Don't want to get the baby frustrated. Okay, so... Okay, so that's done. Basically, now we're just going to cover it with a tea towel or I cover mine also with plastic wrap and you let it sit all night long so it can rise. And then tomorrow will be part five. And what we will be doing tomorrow is um, I actually doubled my batch here. So we'll be getting the bread prepared for baking. So tomorrow we'll be able to bake the bread. We'll go through all the steps that we do to bake. So, okay, we're done with the stretch and the fold. So this is our third series. And don't forget, when you do stretch and fold, you do just like a clock. 12, three, six, and nine. Okay, see you in the morning. We'll start to get ready to bake our bread.